Welcome to SIMA F2 Financial Management, Chapter 4, IS 19. IS 19 is about pension costs, and I'm sure in all jurisdictions you must be aware of the idea that employers promise, promise to their staff uh, a pension at the end of their career, from the moment they retire to the moment of their death, in effect. And there are two types of pension plans you need to be aware of the defined contribution and defined benefit scheme. Now, if you look at defined contribution as the first type of um, pension scheme, this is very, very straightforward. What the employer does, they pay a certain amount, let's say every month, into a savings scheme uh, for the employee. So you have all the insurance companies or uh, maybe the government and the employer commits themselves to make periodic contribution to that scheme. And what would be the double entry for a defined contribution? Well, it would be credit cash and debit expense. So it would be pension expense. So this is a very, very straightforward situation, scenario and there is no risk for from the company's point of view um, to honor that because it's a very short sort of liability that they committed and they have they will have to pay while the employee is employed with the company defined benefit plans are slightly different of course both of them have the word defined which means um, the figures must be known but must be agreed must be in the agreement between the employer and the employee but what you have to see with defined benefit uh, plans is that the employer promises to make future pension payments and that creates an obligation today and that should be reflected in the financial statements just to make sure everyone is okay picture this time frame so you are working for the company so this is the working or the service time working time and there is a point in time of retirement so trying to simplify the concept and sadly enough I will have to mention there will be a point in time where based on various actuarial methods you can assess a uh, general time frame of living for people from the retirement uh, to the point they die. And what the company is doing, they are committing with a defined benefit plan that for this period of time to offer the employee um, a pension in effect. So for all that time, defined benefit plan. Now if you think about it, what you have to do based on a fundamental accounting principle is that this amount you're going to pay here, yeah, so the payout, it's a liability created over the working time of that individual and has to be matched, this entire liability here has to be matched with the working time. So every time a proportion of that liability should be reflected in the accounts during the working time. Because once the person retires, they are not connected to the business in terms of generating benefits. So that liability as such has to be matched with the working time of those individuals. And this is where the complexity arises. So if we think in terms of statement of financial position, what are we going to have there? Very important, you will see there, well, in fact, we'll see a net off between these figures, but let's see what they mean. So first of all will be the pension plan assets. Imagine the company, the sponsoring employer of that pension scheme is monitoring and has is responsible of the performance of the assets within a pension plan however that is ring fenced assets that means it's not responsible the employer itself of those assets but there is a trustee uh, in charge of manage, managing that pension plan investing the money and making sure there are um, obviously the returns on it so these assets don't decrease in value but rather have a steady increase so you have the pension plan assets that on a yearly basis have to be monitored how they performed and could be quite volatile depending on the markets. As you can imagine, when the markets crash, that is a huge risk for companies who, cont who have contributed to such schemes. Then you will have a pension plan liability. 
So pretty much here you will have the net present value of pensions promised by the year end. So these are contributions of the company to the plan. And ultimately we'll um, have a look at what is deferred cost. Deferred cost in simple terms and we'll connect matters as we go along, uh, are all costs or deferred income, all, in, all income that is not in the current period reflected in statement of comprehensive income. So whatever portions you have here, these are for the purpose of the standard called recognized, whereas any other costs or income that is not yet recognized in statement of comprehensive income, they will be deferred or suspended in statement of financial position and referred to as deferred cost and deferred income. So to be recognized in statement of comprehensive income at a later stage. So if we're comfortable with that, let's have a look at the impact on statement of comprehensive income. What are you going to have there? While you expect to have the cost of pensions promised in the year, which you will have to familiarize yourself with in terms of terminology, current service cost, and past service cost and you will have to read yourself the definitions we prepared for you towards the end of this chapter also you will have the increase in the pension liability by the passage of time so because if you look at that this diagram you will see that let me take black um, this working time could be 20 years, let's say, isn't it? So you're joining the company, you're a young professional, and the company is contributing to defined benefits plans. This is 20 years. And let's say after the retirement date, you're keeping healthy and so on. This could be another 20 years. So we talk about long time. So anything to do with long time, if you have this liability here we talked about for this period of time, that we want to match it with the working time of the individual, what we, don't, what we want to do is to make sure when we reflect it in the working time, because it's all long term, because it will be settled in the long term, so you need to consider that you have to create a provision which will be settled in the long term, therefore you will need to discount it, to think of this liability in present value terms. So this liability, you think of it in present value terms, and as time passes by, you will have to compound it with, as we have here, the increase in pension liability by the passage of time, which will get you to an interest cost. So on a cumulative basis, long-term growth in pension plan assets, again, in statement of comprehensive income you'll find. So hopefully it's all good news on the assets at any increase will be reflected in statement of comprehensive income. And what you'd like to see here is recognized actuarial gains or losses pro proportion. So imagine the split between what you recognize uh, and what you don't recognize and defer in statement of financial position. So let's see what happens with this actuarial grain, its own losses. So imagine that this pension plan is never in perfect balance. And if you look here at this drawing, you'll have the assets value and the liabilities to equal would be perfect world, but here you have a tiny bit of deficit. So what are you going to have to do? The first thing you, you have, well, in theory, you can elect and you can decide this, state, this deficit, this loss, um, to be recognized in statement of comprehensive income, or you may go through a few steps and defer part of that um, gain or loss because what you're saying, you don't want to influence your statement of comprehensive income with all the volatility of these gains and losses that will occur every period. So the first thing you do, um, you basically look at the what we call the corridor rule. And I'll give you just a brief highlight of this corridor rule. So you're taking first step, the higher of brought down figures on the pension plan. So the pension plan liability and the fair value of assets in the pension plan. So you take those values, they will be given and multiply them with 10%. Take the higher of the two and that will be your benchmark. Then compare so this is your benchmark. You are going to have to compare what? You're going to have to compare the gain or loss 
with the benchmark from point one. As you compare, excess above excess above benchmark could be could be taken in statement of comprehensive income or you can even farther amortize it or amortize over the remaining life of staff in service over life of staff in service and that will be given to you so as you are amortizing you're taking just proportion amortized for a uh, for one year into statement of comprehensive income everything else is deferred in statement of financial position so i hope this helps a little bit make sure you're familiar with the key definitions and you're comfortable with what goes in the statement of financial position statement of comprehensive income you're comfortable as for provisions with the compounding um, in order to calculate the interest rate and ultimately if you practice a few questions is 19 it's a very doable standard although it's perceived as being quite challenging at the first glance so good luck with prepping and hopefully we are in touch on the next videos best of luck